Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is Taboo Topic Tuesday. And I am sitting outside bundled up because I'm really wanting and loving still doing these Facebook Lives uh, outside. So come winter and deeper into f autumn, uh, we'll see how long I can stand kind of being outside. Hopefully I can make a cozy space, but welcome, welcome. Today is day two, woohoo, day two of unleashing the dragon within. So if you haven't printed out the workbook and you're watching live, wait until after this Facebook live, if you're watching the replay of this, go to the file section on the left hand side of the Facebook group. Go to files. It'll be the first file at the top. The five days to unleash your dragon within. Print out the workbook. Go back to day one. Watch day one and do your observations. Here we are, day two, and it's all about what is hidden below, right? When we think of dragons, and if you're on here live, say hello so I can see you. Um, if day dragons, dragons, caves, darkness, lurking, you know, those all aspects go together. And just like in ourselves, our own dragons often lurk in the shadows. They lurk under the surface, right? We rerun our dragon stories. Good morning, Victoria. Um, we run our dragon stories or run our dragon personas, our passionate, fiery, roaring dragons as kind of an unconscious or when things really hit the fan, right? When we really have to step up to something, that's usually when our dragon personalities come out. But what I would love to really pull out of us is to get to that space all the time. Because as moms, right, we get burnt out, we get frustrated, we get to a tipping point where all of a sudden we were good and we're not, right? It's like there's this buildup that happens. And that buildup is this like dragon energy that we're not expressing all the time. We're not living in our passion. We're not living in our, in our quest. And I feel like dragons and knights are like two sides of the same coin, just as fear and excitement are two sides of the same coin. We talked yesterday that the queen and the servant, you can't have one without the other. There's these aspects of this fighting and conquering as well as this power play that, that comes into it. And so often I feel like we feel like we have to conquer and destroy the powerful parts of ourselves in order to be likable, submissive, obeying. <coughs> and as, excuse me, as we do this, we actually destroy or not really destroy, we do, we do hurt ourselves, but we also push down into the depths further our dragon, so to say. So really today, the assignment for day two is all about looking for power aspects. So finding where and when your dragon really disappeared from your life and now is only working from the shadows or from the the cave, from like the hiding place. So I want you to really dive in. We're gonna go really in depth with this in the workshop on Wednesday. And the workshop on Wednesday, there will be a recording. So if you're going through this and things come up for you and you cannot be on live, absolutely still sign up because there will be a recording. I will get to your questions and with the workshop, even if things come up for you after the workshop, we can still absolutely, I can do some coaching, some um, Q&A inside of the Facebook group, okay? And so day two, I want you to think about three times when you were little, when you were a little girl, any time between from your earliest memory up until, you know, I would like earlier the better, the earliest memories you can find when you were really powerful 
and expressed yourself and something happened. Either you got in trouble. My aspect is when I was little, um, I spoke out and then I remember getting put in the corner and it was like, oh, if I speak up or if I'm powerful, I will lose connection, right? So aligning things that when you were really powerful or when you spoke up or when your voice was kind of dampened, nothing against our parents. We're not judging our parents in this. We're just simply realizing why we don't feel powerful anymore because we were taught to be submissive. We were taught to obey. We were taught that our parents knew best so that we needed to, you know, a lot of, uh, times it was children were seen, not heard. What a different world we're coming into, right? So perfect example today, right before, literally right before this Facebook live, um, my son who is six has a woodworking kit. The tools are very sharp. It's a real woodworking kit. And I've been telling him over and over again, before you even start your woodworking kit, put your gloves on and make sure you're always pointing it away from you. So he literally sits down at his word working table and then I hear, blah, blah, you know, ow, 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 over. And my immediate reaction is, I've told you, put your gloves on. And he says, I don't want to use my gloves. Hey, Katie. Um, and, you know, I go, okay, if you don't want to use your gloves, then you're going to cut yourself because you're not using your woodworking kit properly. And maybe it's time that we put it away until you are ready. And it really got me thinking that our actions are a direct consequence of what happens in our lives. His conscious choice of, I know mom said to put my gloves on doing my woodworking kit, but I'm not going to. Whack! Immediately cuts his hand. And it's such a clear... I feel like with kids we can see it so much more clearly because usually their actions and consequences like happen super fast, natural consequences, right? They like are on top of each other. Whereas with us, when we decide that we want to overspend and then we raise our debt and now we have a debt that we have to pay and we're going, oh, why do I have all this debt and now I can't live freely? Or, you know, living, going and doing something and creating a lot of tension in our marriage or maybe... There's things that we do, actions that we do. And while these are great in expressing ourselves at times, often they're unconscious actions. There are drag, they're not like this conscious thought of, if I do this, what will happen? You know, whereas my son, he was like, I'm not going to wear gloves because that's not what big kids do, you know? And I'm going to do it the way that grown ups do. And yet what he doesn't understand is I have to wear gloves when I would work because I cut my own fingers all up. Like there's things and I'm, we often rebel against the wrong things. And so kind of stepping back into ourselves as little kids, as our inner child and reconnecting to our inner selves, we can really get a better idea of where this rebellion is coming from. Because oftentimes we either overcompensate for what we got in trouble for when we were little or completely hide that part of us that we got in trouble for when we were little. And these are both really important aspects to look at. So working with the dragon energy of really calling out and pulling out our powerful selves. Um, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, absolutely. And so we often go to this place of... When I do this, I get in trouble. Or when I do this, I will get in trouble, but I don't care because I'm an adult now, right? We have two aspects of these, but they're both coming from unconscious behavior. Unconscious actions are creating these consequences in our lives. And so we're really kind of just feeling lost. We feel disempowered a lot. We feel like we're not worth it because, you know, our actions are actually not working out for us. And then all of a sudden we go, well, what am I doing? I'm however old I am. 
I'm trying to raise these kids and I can't even deal with my own emotions, right? So all these kinds of things come into play and it's really vital and really important to, to stop. Yesterday we stopped and we observed what is it that we really need to look at. And now today we're going to do some uncovering and a lot of people don't enjoy digging through the mess. So what I, I would love to just, just take a moment and breathe. And this is actually the physical thing that I walk my clients through. And we imagine our inner child being surrounded by a bubble of light. If you want to do this, you can, you just close your eyes and imagine any age of you, preferably anywhere between like born and seven or eight. I wouldn't go older than seven or eight. If you don't have any memories younger than seven or eight, you've got a lot of dragons hiding. All right. You've got a beast hiding. So, um, either find somebody that you can work with directly or, you know, I've got a monthly mentorship or, um, the $47 quick shift into magic session. So find Imagine, picture in your mind's eye, you as a child and ask your inner child. Yes, you can ask her questions. Ask her to show you a memory of when you were using your power and what happened. And just take a moment to connect and to see that's your husband. That's my husband too, Katie. Um, he doesn't have a lot of memories early on, um, which my husband actually did say, I am going to take your program. We haven't started yet and I'm really excited about it when he's ready. So just like with all of you who go, I'm so ready to work with you. My husband raised his hand and said, I'm so ready to work with you and still hasn't scheduled anything. So it's kind of a scary thing looking into ourselves, right? But I really, really, really want you to look at it from a place of playfulness. I want you to like go on a discovery and a journey with your inner child in a way that feels like you're playing again, in a way that you're just playing. You're not doing shadow work and you're not getting into the dragon. You're not dealing with memories. You know, just play with it and really see what comes of it. What memory happened? What did it feel like? Was there an aha of like, oh, wow. When I yelled at my mom, she hit me. You know, like that's a really power that didn't happen to me, but I know that's happened to a lot of people. And so allowing yourself to really just explore it. And if you want to get into the emotional aspect of it and feel it, that will be even more powerful. If you're not there, seeing it, making the connection, allowing it to go into your body and say, wow, I honor the fact that I've protected myself. Thank you, inner child, for protecting me from displaying my power so that I didn't get hurt when I was younger. I no longer need to do that. If you're in an abusive relationship, I do just want to add this. If you're in an abusive relationship where if you were to express your power and you would get physically hurt, please reach out. Please reach out to somebody, to me, to a neighbor, to somebody. Everybody who is alive should be able to express their power, whether they are three or they are 98. And everywhere in between, everybody deserves the honor of expressing their power without getting physically hurt. And until the world comes to this point, and I feel like we are getting to that place, the world will heal when everybody is able to stand in their power without being fearful of getting physically or emotionally hurt because of their expressions, right? So... I know a lot of the women in this group are of that kind of mind frame, but we all still make mistakes, right? We all still react. Just yesterday, Zion, we were playing and he kicked me in the, like, kicked me with a shoe on in my face. And I, like, put, I pushed him away. You know what I mean? And so until I get control of my reactions when I get hurt, 
I'm still learning, right? And some people will say, oh, but that happens, it's natural. But I, we can still have that much more self-control. And I am going to challenge and urge myself to get that much more self-control, right? I think that's important. And so allows it, that's our whole amygdala. Like we either are fighters, we flight or we freeze, like the deer in the headlights, they freeze in nature. The, the mountain lions and the bears, they fight in nature. The flighters are like the squirrels, the rabbits, right? And so we have this natural reaction to our power. And when our power gets pushed on, just like, you know, when I physically got kicked, my natural reaction is to fight. <laughs> That's what I've learned. I got, when we got chased by a coyote, I didn't run. I turned and like roared at it and was ready to fight this thing. I was going to punch it if I had to. But we all kind of have this natural reaction that we go to. And this is really important because this either means that we fight, we actually overcompensate for the things that we got in trouble for, which I definitely have done. I have gone to such extremes that, you know, I push now to the extremes to try to push my way through of like, this is who I am, this is m me being me. And while it's still a, a overcompensation at times, but then it also pushes me out of my comfort zone. And so sometimes that fight or that overcompensation can really bring us to a place of authenticity. The flight aspect of us, of running away, of hiding, of not, okay, I got in trouble, I'm never gonna show this again. That is never gonna work. You're gonna have pieces of you stuck that actually come out in really inappropriate ways. And this is where, you know, you see the people driving and, you know, they shoot somebody while they're driving because of their road rage. That is inappropriate reactions to pushing down and fleeing from their power. And then the freeze aspect, that often happens when somebody says something to you and you know, like, you have nothing that you can say in the moment. And then as soon as you walk away or the next day you go, oh, Man, that would have been so perfect to say that right now. You know, and it comes to you finally. Your brain unfreezes and you're able to think about all the powerful things that you could have stepped up and said. So, um, yes, Katie, that knee-jerk reaction is tricky to get a hold of. That's what I love giving myself in the situation grace. Absolutely, absolutely. But it, it, I feel like if we acknowledge what happens and we go, wow, I still have something um, I still have something to work on when we, when we constantly see that this journey is a, a journey of discovery and learning and finding out parts of ourselves, I think that we can really understand more of how we can really evolve into the, the magical aspects of ourselves. Because so often we're stuck in one part of ourselves and we're stuck doing the same things that aren't working and we keep doing them even though they've shown us over and over and over again it's not working. Like Zion, he's cut his hand three times now and yet he's still not putting his gloves. He actually is refusing to wear his gloves and yet every time he's sitting down, he's cutting his hand. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, that's not working. Why are you doing it to prove something, but you're proving something to the wrong thing. You're not using your power to actually create change and, and transformation. You're using your power against yourself. So, um, I love to fly. Yes, I hide head in the sand. Been working on that one my entire adult life. Yeah. And your inner child will absolutely, I know that we've talked Katie, so we just need to set that up. We need to just get you in to your inner child, really have them connect and meet. And then Wednesday night, because you're in the sisterhood, you're automatically in the Wednesday night. So try to be there live. That way we can really go into your inner child if you can on Wednesday night. Um, and so Autumn, my parents started making me clean the house when I was seven. And I remember working on the house for hours and it always had to be spotless or we were grounded. Now I'm OCD about my home as an adult and have to have it perfectly clean or I get angry at my child and boyfriend. I hate that. Yes. And I can't read the whole comment right now, but I'll go to it after. But I was the same way when I moved out on my own. I was extremely like everything was clean, everything was spotless, but this was definitely a learned behavior. 
my natural incl inclination is to play way more than clean. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you what my front yard looks right now because I think it's important. Like, this is from yesterday. They came in last night and went straight to sleep. They made a huge mud pit and tracked mud through the whole house and, you know, these were out here to dry. And yet we still went on our walk last night. I made dinner last night. They got in the bath. I laid down with them. We did story time. I was able to stay in the moment rather than going, oh my gosh, I need to vacuum the house. I've got to do all this laundry. The laundry's still here today. I'll just throw it in there. It's nice and dry. I don't have to take a dripping muddy towel through the house now. It's a dry, dirty towel. And I'll just take it through. But really shifting, like what is more important? Being in the moment, allowing your kids to play and get super muddy. And you know, I had to go and I had to clean the whole bathtub out before I took a shower last night. And you know, it's it's a matter of allowing ourselves that, that freedom. Kate, Katie said the grace, the grace to really be present and to find out what's important and to really, right, Monica? Um, I know my dirty house. So really allowing ourselves the freedom. It is freedom to not feel like you constantly have to be on top of everything all the time. Play, play. What is your play? So the dragon is definitely a big part of playing, being powerful playing. I mean, he goes around and burns sheep and eats them whenever he wants. He just plays. <laughs> we don't have to be destructive in our play. But oftentimes, right, isn't play kind of destructive? Like, how much of a mess did they make today, yesterday? And yet they had so much fun doing it. Allowing ourselves to create some chaos, allowing ourselves to create some mess is really healthy is really okay. If you want to go do it out in the forest or out in a park, get messy. Get messy with your kids and allow yourself to cause some chaos and destruction with our kids. Yes. Yeah. Um, or not. I, I like to play by myself too. <laughs> you know, it could be different. And this is why I really wanted to, um, I want to start leading workshops and I wanted to do a retreat, but I think I'm going to have to just start with day workshop and it's going to be all through playing, th playing to heal. And it's going to be about getting messy. We're going to go and jump in puddles and we're going to like roll around and get muddy. Like these are going to be things to get us out of our comfort zone because I feel like you really can't heal. You can heal to a certain degree, you can heal until you hit that rigidness, until you hit that, like you were saying, that OCD, that generational theme, that that's not appropriate. When we hit that, then we hit that wall. And then we go, okay, I don't like that feeling. I'm stuck now. I'm done. But when we get really messy and dirty and play, we stay in the moment and we lose sight of our, our inhibitions. We lose sight of the uncomfortableness so much that we stay in the moment and we can really express ourselves. So this is going a little off topic, but I feel like it was really important in going back. What happened when you were little? What happened when you were didn't quite know what was going on and you were just trying to please your parents, just trying to, to be loved? Look at these, look at these memories and really feel how they come up for you. So, um, if you feel like sharing in the Facebook group, just start a new post and share the three memories that you had when you were powerful and what happened and what insights you got from them. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't want to share in the Facebook group, if you feel like PMing me just so that you can share with somebody and kind of get them off of your chest, absolutely PM me. If you just want to write them in your workbook, just write them in your workbook. But I would love to know who is actively doing this five days of Unleashing the Dragon. I really, really hope to see you tomorrow night at the workshop. It's going to be an amazing workshop. It's not going to be so much teaching as it is really diving in and healing. We're going to do a ton of visualizations. We're going to do some energy work on ourselves. We're going to do some big shifts of mindset. And we're going to come out really having a dragon friend. And it's really amazing. 
um, I got to do a shift into magic session yesterday. I'll end with this. I got to do a shift into the magic session yesterday. And I said, okay, close your eyes, imagine your inner child, and now picture your dragon. And she was like, oh my gosh, I have a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and when we do this magical work, oftentimes we can go, what in the world? I have a dragon? Like, I didn't know I had a dragon. You know what I mean? And so really allowing ourselves to play with the possibilities. This might be really out there for some of you, but it's really just a matter of getting kind of uncomfortable and saying, well, okay, I'm, I could probably have an imaginary dragon. What is the point of that? to play. The point is to play. The point is to get to a new point in your life so you're you're not doing the same things that you've been doing. I don't want to do the same things that I've been doing. That's why I listen to spirit. That's why I play with the fairies and the dragons and the unicorns and the gnomes and have all these kind of weird imagination type things. But it gets me to a point outside of myself so I'm not so stuck. And so I can come up with really cool things like this for us to do. So that's that. Thank you for being here live. Thank you for doing the recording. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining into this five days of unleashing the dragon within. I'm really excited about it. And um, I will see you all tomorrow. And post, post, post. Take just one minute. Take one minute right now and write a post right after this Facebook Live. Share yourself with us. Allow yourself to be a little bit more seen. Get uncomfortable. I promise you won't die. <laughs> all right. I love you all. Mwah! Goodbye.